Uh, we are here with Matt Wilson, who is the CEO of Gaming for Scientific Games. Right. And Matt, uh, you have had a very busy, busy corporate experience in the past mm -hmm. few weeks. Tell us a little bit about the reorganization at Scientific Games and what you uh, believe it will accomplish. Yeah, it's been an amazing 18 months, actually. I started uh, March of 2020 after a long career with aristocrats. So I walked straight into a global pandemic, uh, which is not exactly how I, I drew it up. But I think what's transpired in the last 18 months is quite remarkable. I think pretty much everything has changed at Scientific Games. We have a new set of investors. We have a new chairman. We have a new executive vice chair. We have new leadership at all ranks. And then uh, just recently, we, we outlined a strategic review process, which means we have a, a new strategy going forward, which is really um, key around these two divestitures, which we announced uh, we're in the process of, of transacting on. So yeah, exciting future for scientific games. And just for, I'm sure everybody knows this, but you are divesting your sports betting business and you're divesting your lottery business mm -hmm. to get back to being more of a gaming company. Um, which I guess is the purpose to, and plus you're, yeah. you're in the divesting them, you're also generating a lot of cash that then goes That's to right, solve yeah. that debt problem that's been around for so long. Yeah, between Barry Cottle, who's the group CEO, and Jamie O'Dell, who took over as chairman in the middle part of last year, they came together and said, um, we're gonna try to rapidly delever, which you don't rapidly delever by trying harder, you clearly have to divest something. So we took a long process, looked at all the assets in the portfolio. We've, we've got amazing, um, business units within the broader context of scientific games. L the lottery asset, the sports asset, so the side play asset, our digital casino asset, and then the, the land base. We looked at them, at them all independently and said, um, you know, what's the right configuration for us? We obviously had a, a huge amount of debt we needed to take care of. Um, and the two businesses that we thought would be best positioned as standalone businesses were lottery and sports. Assets that we love, assets that are, are run by great CEOs, uh, in Jordan Levin on the sports side and Pat McHugh on the, on the lottery side. Um, but we feel like those two businesses are really well positioned uh, to stand alone and attract a new investor base uh, and allows us to monetize those assets and pay down debt and then really focus the business around a few core competencies. I think that the three assets left in the portfolio, so the land-based asset, which I run, uh, the, site, the social casino asset, site play, and then the iCasino or digital business, they're really built around this idea of building great content. Um, so they're very complementary, they, they fit together. So a dollar of investment in R&D in the land-based business to build a great slot machine can very easily be leveraged through the social casino business in SciPlay. You just tweak that game a little bit, publish it in one of the apps, you tweak it again and you publish it in the digital business. So it's this flywheel effect, they're businesses that belong together um, and they're very complementary. And so we talk today about omnichannel. Mm. We talk about Netflix paradigms. Yes. Uh, it sounds to me like Scientific Games is there. Yeah, we're in a very unique position to bring that to life. I think there's a buzzword of every G2E, like say two or three years ago, it was skill-based gaming. That was, the, that was the buzzword. I think what we're hearing on the show floor today is omnichannel is here or it's about to be here. You know, our view is the vast majority of casino operators in the next three to five years are going to have some form of omnichannel uh, platform, whether that's a land-based asset and a sports asset, or a land-based asset and sports and iCasino. You know, all of these operators are down that path. Um, the, ma the major ones, the multinational or the, the cross-national ones, are already down this path. The, 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 the pens of the world, the MGMs, the Caesars are already thinking about this, but we think the vast majority of casino operators um, will have an omnichannel presence. And what that means, the new paradigm for operators, is they need to understand how much money players are wagering in a land-based asset, in the sports asset, in the iCasino asset. And so you need to be, bring those systems together to be able to look at a player P&L and understand how much is that player worth across all these different channels. So it's a, it's a totally different paradigm. I think G2E three years ago, Omnichannel was interesting uh, and on the horizon. I think it's, it's here and now, and casino operators yeah. are thinking about it and we're uniquely positioned to take advantage of that. So if we were to uh, take our crystal ball out mm. and look at uh, scientific games three or four years out, what will it look like? Yeah, so I think everything's built on a high performance culture, so I, I lead with that um, always. So we've got a great team um, of veterans with scientific games, we've added new people to the organization, so we're trying to build the best culture in the industry. But I think what you'll see is three 
business units within scientific games, again, the land-based business, the social casino business, and the iCasino business, that are working in harmony to create great franchises. Like We think the power of this business is how do we build great franchises that transcend all those channels um, that players can play on their phone or in a casino. So I think what you'll see uh, is, a, is a growth organisation built around great content and great platforms. Um, I think what, once we get on the other side of these divestitures, we'll be in a very different uh, position from a balance sheet perspective. So um, you know, we're going to invest in growth both organically in R&D um, with Rich Schneider joining the organisation a, a couple of months ago, who's a Hall of Fame CPO, but also looking at inorganic opportunities. You know, there's, there's huge addressable markets out there that we're not playing in. The casual game space is one that's really exciting for us. Um, and we've publicly stated we want to be 50% land-based and 50% digital um, with a high, high growth um, multiple on that. So I think that's where the business is headed. And you know, that's, if we execute on our vision, which we think we have the team and the talent and, uh, and the focus to do, um, that the future is very bright. Right. Uh, you mentioned COVID earlier. Mm. Uh, COVID's had a couple of, uh, presented a couple, it's done a lot of things and it's presented a couple of challenges. One of those challenges is that uh, last year, uh, casino companies quit spending in order to conserve cash. Right. Uh, how are they doing in terms of loosening their budgets now? Yeah, I mean, COVID was uh, impactful across every industry. I think every business had to take a really hard look at their cost base and think about what's the right amount of spend for this business. We have absolutely did that. We took a lot of cost out of areas in our business that weren't propelling us forward, weren't driving growth, with the, with the view that we would reinvest the majority of that back into R&D, which will propel us forward. I think casino operators hunkered down in 2020 and tried to figure out what does the landscape look like. I mean, it, so much uncertainty. Like we didn't know, if you think back, we didn't know whether there would be a vaccine, when it would come, you know, uh, how effective it would be, and what the impact would be on on the economy. I think, and yeah, you know, people mothballed their future projects in 2020 only to see, you know, in, when 2021 rolled around, that the economy was actually a lot better than we all anticipated with the high vaccination rates fiscal stimulus, so we all kind of rushed to, to get the demand going again, and it's um, certainly been a rebound. I think there's two types of operators. There's ones out there that believe the industry's built on great games and that players come to casinos to play great games, and they're kind of at the leading edge of reinvesting into their floors. I think there's other ones that are either reticent around the future, they want to see you know, what the economy looks like over the coming quarters. Um, or they're in love with their EBITDA margins because it, it's phenomenal the, the kind of economics in the casino business once they throttle back on player re reinvestment, they right. reduce their capex spend. But you know, our view is, and we don't have a crystal ball, um, but our view is in the next 12 to 24 months you'll see pre-pandemic le level capex spend coming back. Although what I would say is on the recurring revenue side, it, it bounced back a lot more quickly. So we're seeing that at, at elevated levels right now, but it's really that capex cycle that we're anticipating the coming players back. are doing their part. That's right, yeah, flocking back to casinos, God bless them. The uh, other impact that we see in every industry are supply chain dis right. disruptions. How is Cy Games been affected and how are you working through those issues? Yes, yeah, certainly not unique to Cy Games and certainly not unique to the gaming sector. I think every industry is facing this huge surge in demand. And again, the, the idea that factories were mothballed in 2020 and capacity was reduced and now we're you know, racing back to get that back online. It's showing itself in lots of different areas. So like any part of the business, it comes back to talent. We made a couple of huge highs uh, in 2020, not anticipating this actually, but uh, we're very fortunate to have you know, some of the best in the industry who know this space. And it's frankly, it's a, it's a game of whack-a-mole. You don't know where the next supply chain challenge is, is gonna come up, um, but you have gotta be agile, you have gotta be dealing with it in real time. I mean, I was in LA last week, I could see the amount of boats out there off the shore trying to get into the harbor with um, you know, lots of different goods. Um, so, yes, yeah, certainly a challenge. What I would say for us is we're not, we're not losing orders. You know, things are moving around, but um, you know, I think we're well positioned. I think the good news story is, you know, based on some of the product things that we did in, in 2020, we've got a good amount of demand, which is, I think, the harder part of the equation to solve. I'd much rather have a, you know, some supply chain challenges than have a demand side challenge. Right. So I think we've got some great products that customers are really interested in. Well, talking about products, that's why we're here at G2E. Yes. What are some of the must-sees at the Scientific Games booth? Yeah, I think, so I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to give you uh, four cabinets. So we're coming to the show with four 
cabinets that are either just launched or they're getting ready for launch, which I think normally you'd be excited about having one new cabinet, maybe two, we're coming with four, which just shows you that during 2020, we didn't throttle back on R&D investment, we doubled down. And you know, we were trying, that the analogy in, in hockey is, you know, don't skate to where the puck is, skate to where it's going. We invested in R&D in 2020 because we knew the puck was going to be where it is now. So we're, we're very fortunate to have a great lineup of cabinets. Cascada portrait, Cascada dual, dual screen. We have the Landmark 7000, which is a retro stepper, and our mural cabinet. Um, and then I'll give you one more. I think what is interesting, if you come to our booth, you'll see this future vision for the company coming to life where all the parts of our business are working together in a complementary way. So you'll see amazing franchises on our land-based slot machines. You'll see them also in the iCasino format, and you'll see them also in the SidePlay app. So you'll see this new vision of the company that's all around content um, really coming to life. So come and see us. OK, we'll, we'll be glad to be there. Absolutely. Uh, Matt, very informative, very interesting. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're a gentleman of the industry, and we're, we're fortunate to have you. So thanks, Frank. Well, well thank you. Appreciate Matt. it. Thank yeah. You. Thank you.